Hi, how are you going? I thought I'd just go through a little uh, simple build here of a, a battery bank case. Um, I bought the, uh, the kit off AliExpress and uh, it's minus the battery. And I've um, been given a couple of Duff uh, battery banks. Um, the batteries seem to be okay, but the charging and discharging boards are cactus. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest this uh, hopefully good battery remove this and install it into the new case. Fairly simple, hopefully. Apologies if you can hear in the background my 3D printer. Um, yeah, I left this one out in the sun to dry just after I'd finished it and painted it and... Ah! So yeah, cock up extraordinaire. So yeah, apologies for the noise in the background if you can hear that. Anyway, back to the build. Um, very simply, we've got uh, two clamshells. I've already um, press fit this white piece into the ring frame. It's very similar in construction, I suppose, to a, uh, a phone where you have a, a ring frame. In this case, the ring frame is, a, is only plastic. It uh, looks like metal, but it's just um, chrome plastic. Um, the second piece, which, as I say, I've fitted already, um, slotted in and clipped in in the base. There, no dramas. A uh, little bit tight, but I guess you don't want it to come out. And it actually has, if I bring it a little bit closer, it is plastic, but it's got a, like a leather surface and this sort of um, dodgy, uh, <laughs> well, it looks like um, stitching, but it's not. Uh, so actually, it's quite a good look. Uh, and uh, of course, as opposed to the battery bank that I put together a few months ago, which was a piano black color, uh, this doesn't seem to uh, show your finger um, finger marks up so that, that that'll be a bonus anyway along with that um, we've got another couple of plastic pieces we've got a little window here which obviously must go over there um, a little glue in place and then uh, I notice we've actually got two buttons on this sprue this uh, was actually attached to the ring frame so I just sort of chopped it off but there are actually two buttons mounted on here which I'll just off. Now I'm saying there are two buttons but in terms of the actual device itself there is only one button so I can only assume that this <coughs> mold excuse me must be possibly uh, useful for some other purpose but uh, it looks like this button feed simply into there. There is just a little mounting pin that it goes on. So that's no drama. That's good. I mean that will fall out of course until we're ready to put it in. Um, let's start by putting this window in position. So it looks like it's got some 3M tape. Interesting. So we don't want the centre section in at all. I just have to grab a knife. Well, rather than a knife, I've got a pair of fine tweezers here. There we go. So we've got that sticky edge. Looks like that goes straight into that recess. Getting it down one side first. Pressing that in position. So that's done. I wonder does this have a plastic? Yeah, I think that has a, a plastic layer on top of it which I'll take off later. Okay. <clears throat> Now, placing the button back in, let's have a look see how this PCB goes in. So the contacts are that way up, the button is there. Yep, there's four pins. That just mounts simply on there. 
and by the looks of it there are four ridges there or four webs there which must come down on top just to hold that in position. I tell you what I will do though is I think I'll just put a couple of um, dots of uh, let's think just a bit of Loctite. Hasn't been used in a little while, but it is the gel sort, so it should be okay. So I think I'll pop. Actually, just three standoffs. All right. Hopefully, that will glue that in position. Just checking the button. Seems to work okay. Another battery. And just get this desoldered from here. Oh dear, that was no good. button It's quite high temperature uh, solder, this. There we go. Now, in order to uh, keep the battery in position, uh, they were held in place with a little bit of uh, double-sided sticky tape inside their old cases, so I'll do the same here. I've removed all the old sticky uh, tape from the surface already. I, in fact, used um, a bit of that citrus oil, which seems to dissolve the uh, the glue reasonably well. It's still pretty uh, tenacious. It takes a bit of getting off. Anyway, five minutes of uh, work. It was done. Now. All oh, right, so that was a bit lucky. I put it on the right side, so just noting the battery negative. Mind you, the terminals seem to come out of the centre of this battery pack, which is in fact a, a double battery pack. And I guess I didn't uh, talk, but the battery protection circuit is already included in here. Um, so we don't need to worry about um, that. So let's give myself a bit of room at the bottom, a bit of room all around the side. Just press that lightly into position. And then we'll see if we can't uh, solder off these two terminals. So now just a case of, um, a case of, pun intended, no pun intended, of getting this back cover on, best top down possibly, I really don't know.
seems to be going in okay. Oops. Nice and tight. Oh, let's see if we can't take this off. Mm, that is a faff. Let's see if we can't scratch the surface, eh? That's more like it. Super. Oh, my fingers are a bit dirty. Just moving dirt around at the moment. And so in terms of operation, let's have a look. Oh, I'm wondering whether that um, battery is actually dead. Let's see if we can't find some charge for it. Okay. Well, let's, um, let's leave that for a few hours and see how that uh, charges up and come back later. Right, okay, well look, I'm uh, inside at the computer now and it's a couple of weeks later in fact. Um, this uh, battery bank charged up no problem, it was indeed the battery that was uh, completely flat when I installed it. And I've been using it and it's uh, quite a neat little unit, uh, so I'd like to take you through a couple of the features and also do a, a load test for you using this piece of equipment which I'll talk about in a minute. The battery bank, uh, I guess it's got just the one button on the outside which uh, seems to toggle it uh, on. Then we've got the three connections on the top face here. We've got the full size standard USB which is the only output. And then we've got two inputs. One is USB-C and the other one is uh, just micro USB. And these are both the ports that you would charge the battery bank to. Um, I assume the USB-C, I don't have any USB-C um, charging devices, um, but I assume that you can go to the higher voltages on this, uh, but the uh, micro were just uh, limited to 5 volts. Anyway, um, not really looking at the charging so much, but the discharging, what can this battery bank do? And I've got a tester here, which I also got recently from the internet, it's a ZKE tester. Uh, USB tester, but you'll notice it's also got this uh, other USB lead coming from this right hand side here and indeed it connects through to the computer and there's a bit of software that goes with this which you can test your devices. So with the USB key um, and I'm just using the USB key really just to check some of the uh, results of voltage and current between these two devices to see uh, how they are you know how they compare, are they, uh, do they correlate uh, and therefore infer some sort of accuracy. So when we plug it in it, it, it automatically comes on, um, comes on at 5 volts. Now if you look at the software, this is um, the EB tester software version 1.8.5 and it's a fairly uh, intuitive piece of software and uh, quite comprehensive I have to say. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, using it quite a lot and you, you, you're presented with this large graph here which graphs voltage against ampage and you have a couple of tabs here on the right hand side which shows uh, toggles between single test and auto test and we'll have a look at both of those. Down the bottom here we've got uh, a table which I think is really showing you some of the other uh, parameters uh, as they accumulate or indeed average and things like that. So looking at a single test, I just have to toggle the device back on again because it uh, goes to sleep after about 20 seconds. And let's set this to say 1 amp. Set the cutoff voltage to 4 volts. Now this will act, this whole software will act as a uh, battery tester. And so you can have this going for hours and watch the voltage decay away to a particular point. 
and so that's what this cutoff voltage is for. I don't really need to use this for a single test, uh, but I've put the value in nonetheless. Let me just press the start button. Immediately press the start button, the fan comes on on this uh, tester. It uh, winds up the ampage to 1 amp, and you'll see the voltage just decayed away a little bit, but is maintaining 4.9 on this tester, 4.907 here. Actually on the USB tester it's showing 5.03, so there is a bit of a delta between the voltage between these two. I could probably explain that due to some sort of voltage drop through this device. The ampage is absolutely bob on, which is excellent, so that's 0.9995. <laughs> that's really too many uh, significant figures for me to, uh, to worry there. So yeah, the software will continue to sort of test this. Uh, for as long as you don't stop the, I'll press the stop button, which I'm going to do now. Moving on to the auto test, I really like this feature. What we've got down here is some more parameters, so we can set a starting current. So maybe we're going to start at half an amp. I'm going to go up to three amps because that's what this unit is rated to. It does say three amps there in the display and on the description on YouTube, or, or rather on the AliExpress. Cutoff voltage 4 volts. That's the cutoff voltage for USB 3. It's 4.4 for USB 2. Don't know why there's a difference, but hey, you look, you, devices are probably not going to be liking to be down here, but um, that's what the standard says. We will step up in 0.1 amp steps, and each step will happen every 2 seconds. And these are all on drop down, so you can change all these. So if we press start, clears the graph again. And it does nothing because it's not switched on. That's my fault. It's gone and gone to sleep. Press start again. And immediately stepping up in, uh, from 0.5 of an amp, then in 0.1 amp steps. So we're up to 4.5 watts. The voltage is holding up fairly well. Just come down to 4.9 at 1.35 amps. And a nice thing about the graph here is it's auto scaling both on the X and the Y axis. And we can see it's stepping up through 2 amps now, we're down to 4.75 volts, up to 2.5 amps, and oh, here it's carrying away quite quickly, and then bang, it's gone off at about 2.8. 8 amps, so a little bit shy of the 3 amp current that it's rated to or claimed uh, rating. Uh, we can always go back and do a single test here and then maybe set this to 2.7 and let's just see where it can maintain 2.7. So yes, it will maintain 2.7, but only at 4.6 volts. So I'd say that the um, charger is um, overrated, as they usually are, but it's probably perfectly adequate at 2 amps and probably uh, okay at 2.5 amps. So let me just stop that and show you another nice feature, and that is to test the QC testings. Uh, so QC voltages, uh, let's clear that curve. I'm going to remove and plug that directly in. Uh, testing it earlier, when under this QC test, and there we go, it's turned to 9 volts off, oh, it's going to turn itself off, sorry. a little bit annoying that it uh, times out. So let me just, uh, at 9 volts, the rating isn't going to be 3 amps, I think it's 1.5, so let me test this at 1.2. So 1.2 amps and it's able to maintain 9.1 volts, so that's very good indeed, no problem. Again, I, I say 1.2 is less than the, the 1.5 claimed, but i um, not going to argue too much on this. And uh, obviously we can go up to 
12 volts as well hopefully there we go and maybe test it at well it'll do one amp yep 12.14 and we can actually let's see if it'll do um, 1.2 adjust that 11.97 so it seems quite good okay 1.3 there so that's starting, starting to show that uh, limit so um, there we have it, um, a test of the power bank and also a bit of a demonstration of this uh, ZKE uh, power um, variable power software tester. Um, this does have some other features. It's got another port on the uh, out uh, on the outside here, which is an output port. So you can actually test a device um, uh, which has a load. So you're actually measuring the load going through this, uh, and you can graph that uh, and what have you. So yeah, it's quite a flexible device. If you haven't got one of these, and you're into um, testing power banks and uh, the like. It's probably the best one on the market at the moment. So anyway, links will be uh, below. Hope you liked that. Um, if you did, give us a thumbs up and uh, see you on the next one. Ta-ra now.